This time we're talking about a much requested topic, and that is the art and art style of the game. So let's bounce to it. Good one, Dad. My requirements and constraints for the art of Bouncy Boy are as follows. No textures, except for the particle effects. So all of the models are using a single palleted texture for their shading. This means no normal maps, no AO, no PBR. Low poly models. For basic props, we're looking at less than 500 verts, and for hero models, they're capped at 5k verts. Lots of color grading with post process. The use of emission and bloom. And for Xbox and PC, targeting 4k, 60 frames a second. And for Switch, 1080p at 60 frames a second. When most people think of low poly art, they imagine something similar to this. This style has every triangle flat shaded to emphasize the polygonal nature of the form. My style is a little different. As you can see, it's still constructed of quite simple shapes, but I like to pay attention to the smooth shading and very intentional surface plane changes. You can see how smooth the surface looks and how when it comes up to a sharp edge, you can uh, clearly see the change of direction. This can be quite tricky because dealing with low poly models, the shading is very susceptible to artifacts when the face is not planar or flat. So in some ways it is even harder and more time consuming uh, than dealing with a mid to high poly model. As mentioned before, all models are using a palette texture to color it. This is a simple trick where instead of UV unwrapping the model the classic way, I'll select all the faces of a particular color, unwrap them and then shrink them right down to a single point and move them to that colour on the swatch. I started using Blender way back in the year 2000, which I think was version 1.8. But you're so old. But for years it was only just a play thing. I never did anything serious in it. Then 2006 rolled along and Oblivion was released. I was like, wait, you can make your own swords and put it into the game? Oh, hell yeah. So that's when I started to take 3D a lot more seriously and I got right into it. Over that time I tried many different aspects of 3D from hard surface, organic sculpting, VFX, camera tracking. It was all such a blast. During this time I accumulated quite a few add-ons that really help my workflow regardless what I'm doing in Blender. So these are my favourite add-ons. Hard Ops and Box Cutter. While they are separate add-ons, they really do complement each other and are often considered a bundle. Mesh Machine. Just wow. There is so much insane stuff in this add-on, I only just touched the surface of it. Mirror Tools. I use this for one purpose and it is just amazing. Select a bunch of verts, use Mirror Tools to add a curve. Make that smooth shape you want and then it applies that shape to all the verts that you selected. It is so good. Batex. This is just an awesome exporter plugin so you can just select a whole bunch of props and then export them all at once. I do use a bunch of other add-ons, but these are the ones that I use regularly. Something that I don't see a whole lot of people do is using the trackball navigation in Blender. Uh, this way you can have total control of the viewport. I only like to use this when sculpting though, so if you don't now know about it, uh, here's what it does. When in the classic turntable method, you can circle around the model as if it's on a turntable. However, when we activate the trackball, you can have complete freedom of the viewport. When sculpting, this saves you having to hold your arm in super weird angles to do a stroke. The other thing I do is I keep a single file for a group of props. This then allows me to quickly bash out a bunch of props in Blender, and then quickly export them all to Unity. However, for the hero models, I like to keep them in their own Blend file, and normally keep a few revisions just in case. Hero models are normally larger and are animated with an armature. For simple props, I'll start just by doing some basic box modelling to get the overall shape and silhouette. From there I'll start looking at where I can get the nice smooth plane changes and really capitalise on it. This is usually done by throwing in some creative bevels and loop slides. Another thing I do, and I can already hear the professional 3D artist out there preparing their pitchforks, but I'll use Engons. Okay, okay, but hear me out. I'll use Angons if I know the model will have no skinned uh, mesh animations, it will have no vertex shader manipulations, 
or shader tessellations, which isn't even a thing in this game. The way I see it is if I can get something out quickly, which looks great in game and poses no problems at all at runtime, then what's the problem? The mesh is triangulated on import to Unity anyway, so no harm, no foul, right? One thing I look out for, especially when dealing with Angons, is shading artifacts. If the face isn't 100% planar, you'll see some really undesirable shading, which will show up in the game as well. Now for the hero assets. Because their shapes are generally a lot more complex, the process changes a bit and is a little more involved. First, I'll do a rough block out to give the overall shape of the model. Next, I'll hit it with sculpting tools and really start to discover its true form. I'll go into this stage with an idea of what the finished product will look like, but I'll normally experiment with a few different ideas as well, just exploring with what, what I can do with it, uh, keeping in the back of my mind those smooth planes and sharp transitions. Then it's the most dreaded phase for any 3D artist, and that's retopology. Please don't make me do it! Yuck. Because this asset will be animated with an armature, it's very important to have good topology and quad flow. With this model I ran into a few hurdles where I thought it had uh, quite good topology until I selected a loop and it wrapped around the character like five times. This is not good. So time to pull apart some faces and see where those flow changes were. Once the base topology is done, I'll go and tweak a few things manually and just watch for those plane changes again. Much the same way as a simple prop workflow. With this model, I also experimented with her legs for how they'll deform. I wanted to see if it was better to model a leg straight first and then deform it with the armature. This is the best way to do things like tails and hair, but due to the shape of the legs and the low poly nature of the model, it was actually better to keep it as it was. Speaking of bones and armatures, then it's time to rig it and animate it. Fancy Boy is a cute but simple game, so the rig doesn't need to be too complex. Most models can get away with just a few uh, simple bones, but others I'll create control bones which are non-deformable, but will control the deforming bones. It's important to mark these control bones as non-deformable so they don't get exported. Then a little trick I do to combat that dreaded Blender to Unity rotation problem. If ever you've exported an armature and mesh to Unity from Blender, you know of this problem. Typically what happens is, the model will be rotated on the x-axis by negative 90 degrees and all other strangeness will happen after that. So to fix this, I'll preempt it by rotating it backwards 90 degrees, apply that rotation, then rotate it back another 90 degrees. For whatever reason this works and I'll just go with it. For simple props with only one mesh and no armature, the Xbox process uh, doesn't need this because it can just apply the transform when exporting and it just automatically fixes everything. But for whatever reason, when exporting a bunch of meshes with child-parent relationships, it does turn to poop. So there we have it. That's how I get my stylized look into my 3D games. These workflows work well for me and I really like how they look. Now, some people were asking for tutorials to be done in the future. I'm totally open to doing that for you all, but uh, yeah, just let me know what you'd like to see. For now, I better get back to work so I can actually release this game one day. So, see you next time.